Hello, I'm JW. Uh, now we've had a look at various consumer units uh, previously, and this time we're going to have a look at this uh, thing here, which is a three-phase equivalent. Not normally referred to as a consumer unit, but uh, nevertheless it's uh, fairly similar. And then it has the various devices inside. Now, uh, three-phase, of course, implies that it's going to have at least three times as much stuff in it. And uh, this particular one is actually the smallest in the range. Uh, this is only a four-way unit, which contains uh, four three-phase circuits. So uh, let's have a look inside and see what kind of things you could fit inside. Now, this particular one is uh, made by Eaton, and it's a Mem Shield 3, which is a current range you can still buy. Uh, this particular one is, in fact, uh, brand new as well. And uh, so this is a uh, four-way device, as in uh, four outgoing circuits. And uh, this is all metal, uh, sheet steel with a painted uh, finish on it. And the uh, door on these is uh, just hinged there, and just uh, swings open like that. And uh, this particular one, as in uh, case most of them, you can just simply lift off the entire door like that. Uh, it's just uh, mounted on these little store hinges here, and it's just a pin that slots in. And uh, they're generally all like that, so you can remove the front cover for much easier access. And inside here, then, we've got uh, nothing at all because these are supplied empty. And then it's up to you to buy the equivalent devices to go inside as you would need. And I've got three holes here. The bottom one here is where the uh, incoming device would be. And uh, generally, that's going to be an isolator or a switch. But uh, you can also fit uh, an RCD in there. And again, various types of those are available. And then your outgoing circuits would be on this side and on this side. And in the case of this one, we've actually got uh, four outgoing circuits. So it will be one here, one here, and then two over the side as well. And those will be three-phase outgoing circuits, so only four in this particular model. And the larger ones are pretty much the same layout. Uh, the only difference being that these uh, cutouts here are much taller. And again, the whole thing itself, again, is considerably taller. And they're available in uh, sizes typically uh, sort of 16 or 18 or even more ways in some cases. Now, I'll just have a look inside. And the uh, cover on this one is skewered with these four screws, so uh, two at the bottom. And we've also got two at the top. So uh, just undo the screws here. Now I've already loosened the two at the bottom here. And uh, notice that once you've loosened the screws, the screws don't actually fall out. They're actually held captive within the front panel. And you only need to loosen the ones at the bottom because the whole thing will just simply lift off. And then at the bottom here, you've got those slots rather than holes. So get all designed for much easier access. And I say the screws at the top there, they are captive. They're not going to be falling out because they've got those washers on the back to hold them in position. And again, this is all steel, and the only parts which are not are these uh, end caps here, probably just as a uh, cover trim there. Those are actually plastic, but uh, the whole thing is a sheet steel. So here's a view inside of the device, and the uh, incoming uh, switch or other device here would fit in this space here. And I've got the three uh, connections for the three phases here. So it'll be phase one, two, and three. And the other connections are under these plastic panels, which can be removed. And if you had a three-pole come incoming switch, essentially the three phases would come into the switch and then go through onto the three tabs there. And the neutral in that case would not be switched. That would actually just go directly to the neutral connection over this side. And that's where the cable would fit in there. And you see there's then the bar comes up here, goes across to the neutrals on this side, and again it goes behind and across the back to the neutral bar on the right side. And the earth connection is very similar, that's the large one over this side, and again that comes across to the earth here, and again for the earth on this side as well. And also note that the earth is actually bolted through into the cabinet itself, so the whole thing being made of metal is connected to the earth also, and similar thing over this side. And additionally, on this particular example, uh, there's also a stud here on the side, which uh, you could actually attach an earth cable to as well if you wanted to. And if you have a look on the outside of it, see there's the outside stud, and it's marked with the earth symbol next to it. And there is actually a similar thing on the other side there, except they've just got a black uh, blanking plug in it at the moment. But uh, nevertheless, it's been pre-cut, uh, so you can connect on as you would like, either the side, that side, or the internal one as well. Now, as well as a three-pole isolator, you can also get a four-pole isolator, and it fits in the same position here, so you've got the three uh, tabs there for the three phases, 
And what happens with that one is rather than the neutral going over to the direct connection here, the neutral would actually come into the fourth pole of the isolator. And then it comes with an accessory piece which actually bolts onto this fixing here. And that provides a fourth tab there. So your four incoming wires just come in the bottom, three phases and neutral. So in that case, it'd be uh, all the conductors would be switched. And again, the earth is always going to go to the single connection over there. Obviously, that's never switched. And so this can actually be an isolator or an RCD. But in the case of the RCD, then that would be the four pole as it would have to monitor the current in all three phases and the neutral. And any imbalance would cause that to trip at whatever level it was set to. And you can also get a single pole switch for this or a single phase kit, which essentially is a uh, two pole switch here. So you have a neutral coming in and just one phase. And then these three holes are actually used to link all of these together. So in the case of only having a single phase supply or only wanting to use this on a single phase, then you can have just a normal two pole switch there with one for the phase and one for the neutral. And uh, we've actually got one of those here, which we'll be installing this later on. Now here's a close look at the uh, neutral and earth bars. And see so the neutral one here has this blue uh, plastic behind. And you see that they're actually numbered uh, from uh, one to six there. That corresponds with the six single phase outgoing circuits above. And the earth one again is uh, at the back here. And again, same arrangement. And it's again labeled from one to six. So and identifying which uh, particular neutral is for which circuit. And in the event of a three phase circuit, uh, of course you only use one of these. So it'd be number one and number four. And you've also got a couple of spare terminals at the bottom, just marked N there. And again, the same on the earth at the back here. And as we saw before, this is the uh, neutral incoming connection. That's where the main incoming neutral cable would go. That's if you were having a permanently connected neutral and just switching the phases only. Now this is the uh, top section where the outgoing devices will fit. And say in this one you've got uh, up to six on each side if you're going for single phase circuits. Or for the uh, three phase one it uh, basically fits over all three of those. And unlike uh, domestic consumer units, although the devices are similar, they actually fit uh, horizontally in here. So the uh, line connection coming in at the bottom here, and that actually goes horizontally, then your outgoing wiring connects on the sides here. And uh, just as with the uh, normal consumer units, if it's an RCBO, then again, it fits into the uh, space here. And then the uh, flying lead from there goes onto the neutral bar below. And of course, in the case of just a normal circuit breaker, then the uh, line wiring connects on the uh, device here. And then the circuit wiring goes to the neutral bar below. Now, although this is a three-phase board, you can put single-phase circuits in it and uh, quite easily just have some of these as uh, three-phase outgoing circuits and others as a single. And the uh, deal is that uh, in a country like the UK, where the voltage is supposedly 230 volts, on each of these, though these are different phases, then you actually have uh, 230 volts between one of these and neutral. And it doesn't matter which one, it's uh, 230 between any one of those and neutral. And uh, if it's between two phases, then it's actually 400 volts between any two of the phases. So in the case of a three-phase device here, it will be 400 volts between these two, 400 between these, and also 400 between these as well. But if you measure between any one of those to neutral or to the ground, then you'll find it's the 230. So uh, there's no real sort of conversion or anything if you want to just put a single-phase thing in. It's just simply the fact that it's connecting onto just one of these. And then the other end goes to the neutral, and a three-phase device would have all three of these going to whatever machine or whatever piece of equipment it was. Now, this particular board is actually going to be used for a single-phase application, and uh, that's mainly because there's only a single phase in that particular location. So the uh, reason for using this particular board is that there's a lot more space inside, and uh, therefore it's much easier to install. And being more of an industrial item, it's far more appropriate than having some plastic or uh, thin uh, tin foil consumer unit in an industrial location. And uh, we've got the actual incoming here, which uh, say is a separate item you have to buy as a separate thing. These do not come with anything installed typically. And uh, this is a single phase uh, incomer with a uh, basically a conversion kit. So what we've got inside is uh, a selection of labels, which we'll be applying later. We have a bag with various uh, components inside. And then here we've actually got the switch itself, which is a two-pole switch there. And then we have this large plastic shroud, which goes over the entire thing. And the uh, switch aperture here is the same size. It's just got two blanks in this case, because we've only got the phase coming in and, of course, the neutral. 
and the larger ones would have uh, all three phases and neutral, or in some cases just uh, three phases and then no neutral. That was not switched, and it is actually marked here at the bottom with the various phases there, L1, L2 and L3, and neutral on the right hand side. Now this there is just a plastic cover which goes on afterwards. Got the uh, slots there in the bottom where the cables go in. And then the uh, switch assembly here, this is actually a two pole switch with two uh, blanks fitted. And these are actually the same blanks that fit here if you're not going to use the particular ways. And it's interesting to note that the blanks are full sized, unlike those domestic things where they just sort of clip in the front panel and someone just pry them out. These actually clip into the entire assembly so it's impossible to remove them without taking off a front cover. So the first thing I want to do is to take out this screw here. And that just comes out. And then the uh, neutral leg here, again that will just use the same one, it's got a little washer on there. And that will just go back up on the top there. So now here we have four, so the neutral here which just goes across onto the two bars either side. And that means when we put the switch in place, then the neutral is switched along with the uh, phases as well. And um, because this is a uh, single phase application, then the uh, next thing to do is to fit this bar here, which goes onto those uh, three across there. So again, they're all then connected together, pass through to the single phase. Now, so this already has the uh, threaded parts on it, and the screws or bolts provided are basically clearance fit on the three holes there. And then it's just a question of using these with the appropriate washer to secure those all in place. So now all of those are in position and then we take the uh, switch assembly here which has a metal bracket on the back and it comes actually assembled like this. It's basically just two blanks uh, clipped over the end there. And uh, just make sure the uh, terminals are fully open on the top there, which they are. And then these two uh, bracket pieces just slide over the screws in the back of the case. So we just need to uh, loosen those a little bit. And these actually come with the unit, uh, it's just obviously this is a separate thing you purchase. So I've just lined it up with those and it will just slide over that and as it does you see the two prongs there, the neutral and the phase, actually just go into the fittings on the top there. So we just hold that in place and again just tighten up the screws to hold that in there. And then once that's in then we'll just tighten up the screws in the actual switch itself. And again those will clamp onto the uh, phase and neutral tabs we saw before. So that's fully tightened and our incoming cables are actually going at the bottom here. So I've got the line and neutral or phase and neutral there. Switching straight through, neutral comes into the uh, connection point here and that will go across to the neutrals there and of course over this side the same. And then because we've linked all three of these together, although these three don't actually go into any device, the single phase here will connect to all three and then we'll basically have 12 outgoing single phase circuits. Of course all on the same phase in this particular case. And this particular neutral here we're not going to be using because that will be for direct connection and the earth will just connect in over this side on the large earth terminal over here. Now of course the next stage here would be to install the cabling. I'll I'm not doing that here. But uh, once that's been done then this plastic shroud actually fits over the top and again it's just held in with these two screws here, one on either side. And those go into the preformed holes in the back of the case. So this will actually fit over the top. And they're just a question of tightening up those screws into the holes which were already in the case before. And because we've actually fitted that bar connecting all three, we need to apply this label, which again is supplied with the equipment itself. So basically this just indicates that uh, We've fitted that uh, shorting bar, so uh, although this is a three-phase board, we've now converted it to a single-phase board. I uh, presume that's a stop idiots then connecting all three phases here, and then basically shorting out uh, all three phases together, which of course would cause fuses and things to be destroyed in other parts of the building. So that's now assembled, and uh, this is all covered so that when the switch is in the off position, you don't have any exposed uh, metal parts inside, so of course your live cables coming at the bottom would still be connected. And obviously that just covers over the entire thing. And uh, in this case, uh, we're not going to be putting any outgoing devices in at the moment, mainly because those are not actually here. But of course, you just uh, attach those in horizontally here and over this side. And then the neutrals will connect to the uh, bars here. 
and of course over that side for the circuits there. And they fit in in much the same way as a uh, consumer unit does. They simply slide over the tabs here. The bottom actually secures with a screw, and then the back of it actually hooks around this uh, rail here. And of course the same over on the other side. And say this one's going to have all our CBOs in it, so it'll be uh, 10 of those and two blanks. And then the uh, lead from the RCB will simply go into the neutrals here. But uh, you could also put normal circuit breakers in, it's just a question of then the uh, live wiring comes into the circuit breaker there. And then the neutral from the circuit will just go straight into the neutral bar as appropriate. And uh, once all that wiring is put in, of course, then it's just a question of putting the two plastic covers back in position. Let's just snap into place there. And again, over the other side. So once you've got your devices here, or the appropriate blanks, it's all pretty much enclosed, even with the front cover removed. And again, that's a reasonable safety feature. And another thing to note about these things is that unlike uh, domestic consumer units, so say these are made of uh, steel, notice at the ends here, there's no holes or any things to actually knock out on these at all. Uh, what you have to do is to remove this uh, end plate completely. Actually, it's got the uh, screws there with the uh, slotted access as well. So you would take off this whole plate, which leaves the whole bottom open, and then you would actually drill this to whatever size holes and uh, shapes that you would actually need, whether it was uh, conduits coming in or whatever else. So certainly uh, a bit more work involved in installation, but the uh, benefit of having just blank plates means that you're only cutting out the precise holes you actually want. You don't have those sort of partially cut things uh, all over the rest of the enclosure. And the top of this one is exactly the same. So again, you've got that removable plate there on the top. And again, just uh, cut whatever holes in it as appropriate. So look there, they uh, three-phase distribution board. And so this particular one is going to be used on a single-phase application. That uh, mainly for it uh, being much higher quality and considerably more robust than a uh, typical consumer unit. And so they, one of the big advantages is you've got a lot more space inside for cabling as compared to the uh, usual domestic style, of course, which only has an inch or so space above the devices. And these are certainly much better if you're going to bring in, say, a large number of, say, armoured cables, that type of thing, as the entire thing is uh, far more robust. And it's uh, much better to attach heavy cables and things into at the bottom or the top there. And uh, so we're not going to actually uh, put any devices in this at the moment because those aren't here. Those are still on order as they are specific to a particular installation. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.